think overall, a battery could just be a bit of tech that's marketed to me and you at those wanting to reduce our emissions, but really without a massive impact on CO2. Hey, my name's Tom and welcome back to Low Carbon Lifestyle. I've been making videos on YouTube for about two and a half years now. And occasionally I get comments with some advice for the next steps that we should take, which is great. One of the comments I get quite a lot on my videos is that we should get a battery, take advantage of time of use tariffs uh, to help power the heat pump, or eventually benefit from using electricity that we could generate locally with roof mounted solar panels. That would help us avoid using electricity from the grid. And that's, that sounds great. And there are a few financial arguments for installing a battery. There are potentially a few carbon arguments for installing a battery too. But there is a cost financially and in terms of emissions of installing a battery. So should I? In this video, I'm going to talk through the maths. I'm going to work out how much money and how much CO2 a battery could help save. I'm going to try and answer that question. Should we get a battery? My name is Tom and this is a little series about a low carbon. So what do we mean when we talk about installing a battery? This could be a number of products that are available today. Products like a Tesla Powerwall to products like a Powervol or a Sonnen battery. And these come in a range of sizes and they come at a range of costs. So let's make an assumption to begin with and, and do the maths on an assumption. The assumption is that we could install an unbranded 10 kilowatt hour battery for around 10,000 pounds. Is that fair? What do you reckon? 1,000 pounds per kilowatt hour installed? Is that there or thereabouts? I mean, what prices have you seen? If you've seen any, feel free to comment if I'm miles off. But let's start there. 10 kilowatt hours for 10,000 pounds. Let's keep it simple. With a battery installed, we start to be able to play around with our electricity use. We can charge at certain times of the day and therefore we could use different electricity tariffs to take advantage of lower cost electricity. So on my current tariff with Octopus Energy, electricity during the day costs 29 pence, but at night it costs 21 pence. So there's an 8p differential if I can shift when I use my electricity. There are also other tariffs like Octopus Go and that has a much bigger differential. The rates at my house would be 38.5p for the day and 7.5p overnight. A differential 31p, which is massive. And there are other tariffs with other companies. And as the energy market continues to get used to electrification of all things, there could be many more. And I guess this is nothing new. We've had things like Economy 7 tariffs for a really long time. But let's start with some analysis on that 8p differential and also on that 31p differential. If you're able to charge the whole battery at the nighttime rate of 10 kilowatt hours and then use that 10 kilowatt hours during the day, then you could make a saving of either 80 pence per day on my current tariff or three pound 10 per day on Octopus Go. And in the summer with our heat pump, we don't really use 10 kilowatt hours each day, more like five or seven kilowatt hours, but many households may use much more than that and use the full 10 kilowatt hours of battery. So let's just assume that, that we do that each day. The saving on a time of use tariff could then be between 291, 292 pounds a year or 1,132 pounds per year, which is really meaningful. But what about winter? In, in the coldest months for us with a heat pump, 10 kilowatt hours won't be anywhere near enough to power our heat pump during the day. There are some days in January where we used over 30 kilowatt hours in a day, even over 40 kilowatt hours in a day. So that 10 kilowatt hours overnight would cost 75 pence with Octopus Go, but then we would use 20 kilowatt hours at the higher rate of 38p, which would cost £7.71. A total cost for a winter's day of £8.46. If we were an Octopus Go, but we're on the current tariff that I'm currently on, it would cost us £7.90. So cheaper on my current tariff than Octopus Go, which is kind of interesting. The coldest day in January, we used even more than 30 kilowatt hours. So our current tariff would be even cheaper than Octopus Go. So it's not as simple as those commenters have said, get a battery, get on Octopus Go, you'll save. It really isn't that simple. Yeah, if we use 10 kilowatt hours per day in the summer, we'd be able to get that on a cheap tariff. But as soon as we use more than 10 kilowatt hours in the winter, in the spring, in the autumn, 
the savings start to diminish and tariffs like Octopus Go start to become less attractive. Okay, so I'm not too clear that a battery on its own will offer major financial savings. So what about emissions? Well, the reason why electricity can be cheaper overnight is that there's less demand overnight. And less demand means less need for gas power stations, and therefore it means lower emissions. And data from the Electric Insights page suggests that overnight in September, and just using September as an example, the demand goes down to, to about 21 gigawatts in the UK. But during the day, it peaks at nearly 37 gigawatts, and that's a massive variation. And we need those really fast moving gas power, power plants to pick up the slack. At 21 gigawatts over the night, our emissions on a wind, windy night in the UK could be very low. And this week, they fluctuated around 100 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour overnight, compared to about 180 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour at the peaks in the afternoon. So let's assume charging overnight gives a benefit regularly the whole year, whole year round of about 70 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. And this would mean that a 10 kilowatt hour battery could help shift the peaks so that we reduce our emissions by 0.7 kilograms per day or 250 kilograms per year, which is kind of interesting. And if there was a bank of batteries in loads of homes all across the country, that could really help avoid these peaks. And then we could have a really meaningful impact. And we could call this something like distributed storage. And that could, maybe even will, play a major part in a low carbon future. So I'm building the case here for storage, but am I building the case for a domestic battery? I'm not sure yet. So let's keep on thinking. Let's try adding solar panels into the mix. If we're able to install a system of about three kilowatts of solar panels, which is probably about an average size uh, for, for a domestic system in the UK, that would generate where we live around two and a half thousand kilowatt hours of electricity per year. And the key thing with solar panels is trying to use as much as you can at home, at your own home, so you can make big savings. Because when generated electricity goes to the grid, we aren't paid that much. Some suppliers pay a little bit more, some suppliers pay a little bit less. But let's assume we're back on the Octopus Go tariff with a daytime rate of nearly 40p, 38.5p per kilowatt hour. Every kilowatt hour the solar panels generate will save you nearly 40 pence if you use it as you generate it. But using three kilowatts in any moment is quite difficult. We can shift washing machines and cooking and heating of water, making a cup of coffee, all that kind of stuff to the middle of the day or to, to do them on a sunny day to take advantage of solar generation. But it could be difficult to use all the electricity that you generate locally. So let's assume that you use 50% of what you generate for your normal day-to-day -day activities. 1,250 kilowatt hours used at home. That much would save you between 360 and 475 pounds per year, depending on which tariff you're on, which is great. It's a good, that's a good amount of money. The rest would go to the grid and you'd get maybe five pence per kilowatt hour for every kilowatt hour you export. So 1,250 kilowatt hours at five pence will get you around 62 pounds extra. Without a battery, a three kilowatt solar system would save you around 500 pounds per year. And that might pay for itself in around 10 years, which is great. Now let's add back in that 10 kilowatt hour battery. An average day in the summer, the solar panels might generate between 30, maybe 35 kilowatt hours of electricity. If we used five kilowatt hours by running normal day-to-day -day life, then we might have an extra 25 kilowatt hours to fill up the battery. And that would leave 15 kilowatt hours to be exported to the grid. And that means over the summer, we would get that 10 kilowatt hours on the battery for free, and we'd be saving three pound 10 per day on that Octopus Go tariff, which is great. If we can use all the energy that we've charged the battery with, then the solar panels charging a battery would add an extra £400 of savings over the summer, more or less, which is great. They might add some value in the spring and autumn too, so let's say £600 in total over the whole year. But in the winter, a battery doesn't offer much of a service alongside your solar panels. You're likely to be able to use almost everything you generate in, in the winter. You could still use your battery to play around when you pay for electricity, which could give you some of the savings I described earlier. So in terms of CO2 and solar panels, a battery is basically storing up your sunny electrons rather than exporting them to the grid. And this doesn't really have any positive or much positive impact. If you didn't have a battery, those sunny electrons would be used by your neighbours. And we'd burn that bit less gas nationally. A battery is basically putting up a dam on your electricity supply 
and saying, nope, they're all mine. They're for me only. When actually they could be shared with the people nearby. But I do think a battery coupled with solar using a time use tariff could give you savings of anywhere between £900 and £1,500 per year. With a heat pump like that we've got, it gets a little bit more complicated. A battery could still help you save and save a figure in a similar ballpark, like £900, £1,500. So if a battery costed ten grand to offer this service, then the payback of taking advantage of time of use could be around nine years, based on £1,100 uh, saving per year. If you were just using a battery to capture your solar generation, then the payback would be more like 15, 16 years, based on saving around £600 a year. And neither are bad returns, that's great. But in terms of emissions, shifting your peak from Shifting your demand from the peaks could help us all a little bit, but it isn't much of a game changer as an individual. So, I'm still a bit unsure. And I'm actually even more unsure when I think about where else batteries may be. I've talked about the opportunity for distributed energy storage, and I'd fully support more storage around our communities. The medium story is that as people move to electric vehicles and as they leave them plugged in, there's an opportunity to perform some of the same playing about with our electricity demand in when we charge our vehicles. And actually, we can do this today already by programming a charger to only charge overnight. And that's actually the whole concept of the Octopus Go tariff in the first place, trying to push people to use cheaper electricity. And some electric vehicles already actually have a capability to provide a power to an external load. In the medium term, we're likely to, to have what we call vehicle to home or vehicle to grid capability. The crazy big Ford F-150 in the States had an advert at the Super Bowl where someone powers their whole house during a blackout. It's the future, it's even the present for some vehicles. And this could mean instead of a battery in one of your utility room cupboards, many of us who are fortunate enough to have a drive at home would have a battery parked outside. And for a lot of time, able to offer similar services to what I've described earlier, taking on solar charge or charging on cheap tariffs. And if we assumed that in 10 years time, there might be electric vehicles parked up, able to move about when they're charged and supply some power back to the grid, let's say one kilowatt of power back at any time, this would ultimately remove one kilowatt of power from the grid. And if there were one million EVs parked up and able to supply power in this way, that, that would add, to the, add the potential for one gigawatts of peak power capacity. And if they could have provide that power over a period of time, this is a huge potential amount of energy that is shared to the system. And it's energy that an individual car battery would barely notice. If they gave this energy for one hour, this would be one kilowatt hour, which is about three or four miles of range. And for cars with batteries, modern cars with batteries of 40 kilowatt hours, it's not really noticeable. Okay, so I think that maybe this is starting to suggest that domestic batteries are not needed in loads of cases. A battery on wheels could cover everything a battery under your stairs or in your utility room does too. But actually so far, I've only talked about storage in the form of lithium iron style batteries. There are other ways to take advantage of time use tariffs and to shift our demand. So what are they? Well, simply many of us have got hot water storage and immersion coils that provide a hot water at home. We could charge our hot water tank using time of use tariffs overnight or using excess solar that we generate locally. A 200 litre cylinder being heated from 10 degrees as it refills to 50 degrees to store water would use 9.3 kilowatt hours of heat, which is actually a similar amount of energy to that 10 kilowatt hour battery. And those of us with heat pumps can program hot water generation overnight and program heating to avoid the peak electrical demand. We can do that now, we can just do it. When we've electrified everything, we can help reduce the peak loads on the electricity grid. And batteries can help, they could be part of that story, but also working more smartly with our demand today could also help even more. Okay, that's where I've got to. In these calculations, I haven't really considered the life of a battery and the potential need for a replacement one day. I've not considered the energy and the materials and the cost environmentally to manufacture a battery. I think overall, a battery could just be a bit of tech that's marketed to me and you at those wanting to reduce our emissions, but really without a massive impact on CO2 but maybe with some help towards your bank balance. 
for me, it, it, domestic batteries aren't a priority in decarbonizing our economy. Our future energy system will need some storage and that energy system may well use electric vehicles parked up and to deliver small amounts of energy here and there. I wonder whether it won't use big amounts of, of energy from domestic batteries. So YouTube, what do you think? Should I still in, install a domestic battery at home? And if so, is that because you think there's some payback or do you think there's some emissions benefit? What am I missing? What have I missed in what I've said so far? I'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments. Please do get in touch. Cheers. See you soon.